Good morning and welcome to the zoning administrator meeting of December 21st. It's our, I think it's our last zoning administrator meeting of the year. Hey, um, <clears throat> wrapping things up here. So um, it's 1030 and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, we have no minutes to approve. So um, I'll move on to our, our next item. Um, this is a public comment time. This is a time for members of the public to comment. And <clears throat> before I open it up for public comment, this is for items that are not on the agenda, but we did have a continuance for one of the items on our agenda. And it had to do with 100 Sebastopol Road. So if there's anybody here that would like to comment on that item, it is effectively now being taken off the agenda so now is the time to speak. If you have any comments about item 6.3, which is again, it's a conditional use permit um, for 100 Sebastopol Road. So, yes. Is, is it my understanding that this will be continued on to a general uh, planning commission meeting? No, it won't be continued to a planning commission meeting. It'll be continued to the zoning administrator meeting at a later date. That's the plan now things could change, but I, I have not been involved in that too much, but at this point it's being continued. And I, the planner's not here. I don't know if it's being continued to a date certain or um, or, or if we'll be re-noticing it. I believe the it email is. email I got, is, your comments have been received, recorded. Planning staff is requesting continuance of this item to a date uncertain. Please let me know. Yeah, I think initially they were uh, we were going to or the planner was going to schedule it to a date certain, but then uh, there were some other things that needed to be resolved at the site. So it is being continued and it'll be noticed when we schedule a date. So if you're here for that, you're welcome to comment on it now um, and the planner will see those comments. But if uh, you want to come back and you're welcome to come back for that that meeting as well. I'd like to comment on it. Okay. This. Uh, uh, yes, if you would like to go ahead and uh, state your name for the record, please. Uh, David Zedrick, Z-E-D-R-I-C-K. -Z okay. And I own a property at one at, uh, right across the street from 100. I have uh, uh, 1.7 acres of land on which we're going to be building a couple of hundred homes. And next to us is Marcel Dominguez. Uh, she's our neighbor and she's in the same position. Behind us is Shamrock Building Materials, uh, vacant land. It's a total of about four acres and we've been uh, held up about two and a half to three years because of other reasons. Uh, Basically, the, the city staff was, at that time, they're not very much, uh, was holding the construction of new homes from a much higher standard than anywhere else in Santa Rosa. It's like a, a FAR 2 is fairly standard. We were set at a FAR 5 or a FAR 6 in that neighborhood. I just want to interrupt for a second and let you know that you're being timed and you have two minutes. So if you have comments about the project, not about your project. Right. Be good. I'm that going to get you in the, there. The project across the road mm -hmm. is shown to be, uh, you know, a, not an all day, not a, a 24 hour day deal, but it is. The, the trucks trucks come in and out of there for refurbishing, getting ready for the next day's uh, taco truck mm -hmm. job. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's going to be a noisy operation. Uh, Cliff lives actually not far from there at a different site. And they're like, keeping it up all night too. Mm -hmm. It's not a friendly neighborhood deal. We put we have 300 houses, let's say, are built on our property, and they're going to have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. And with, what you've done by approving that is you put the sale of our property and new housing uh, into a hard place. It's not going to happen. Um, that's basically my concern. It's a serious concern. Mm -hmm. We're going to argue about it uh, the next time we know that it's coming up, but uh, it's not it's not a good location. Somewhere else would be good, but not right there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to comment. Sure. If you could please state your name for the record. Cliff Wiggum. 
Um, the project as it's proposed on the card that I received is a operation from 10 a, uh, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. I live next door to a truck commissary and their trucks get back at 10 and they spend the entire night servicing and cleaning the trucks. So the operations, the real operations are from 10 at night until eight in the morning. And because the trucks are in locate, out in locations in the communities and they come back to the commissary to reload and clean and they're required to have a commissary to be in operation at all. Uh, as stated here, it says that the uh, hours of operation is 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. In truth, the real operation and the new activity is going to be occurring is at 10 p.m. till 8 a.m. in the morning, which is through the night. You can hear it down the street. I mean, they've got pressure washers going and just things clanging and lots of noise. And they like to play the radios really loud when they're working. And I, I, there's 10 trucks at the commissary next door to my property. And that's only on a half acre of property. This project is 1.8 acres. And on 1.8 acres, I could expect they're going to have between 20 and 40 trucks on there. That means 20 to 40 trucks will be entering and exiting the property on a daily basis, mainly in the morning when kids are going to school. The other problem is on both the north, or on the east side and the west side of 100 Sebastopol Road is residential. The um, village station housing and new development is the one on the corner of Sebastopol Road and Boyd. It's just across the railroad tracks from this property. Properties across the street is the Roberts District, which the city has rezoned for multifamily high density housing. We're working on getting the zoning adjusted for that. And eventually there will be somewhere in the nature of 600 housing units in multifamily, including affordable housing, built across the street. This project they're proposing is virtually, it's light industrial. It's not neighborhood uh, oriented. You won't go, be able to go onto the property and buy a taco. It's closed. I, the commissary next door to me is not allowed to sell anything to the public. So I, I'll be back for the minutes on your agenda. I just throw that in. I, I appreciate your comments. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to speak on non-agenda items? Sounds like there are no further comments. Okay, now I'm gonna close. Whoops, I'm gonna close the public comment period. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Getting into item number four here, the zoning administrator business, the, state, the statement of purpose for the zoning administrator. The zoning administrator is appointed by the Director of Planning and Economic Development and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements, entitlements or land use permits. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the appropriate appeal body, including the design review board, cultural heritage board, planning commission, or city council. For any actions taken today, the appeal period is January 2nd, 2024. You got a bonus three days on that because of the holiday. <laughs> so it's longer than a 10 calendar day. I think it's more like a 13 calendar day appeal. So uh, the next item is 4.2 zoning administrator reports. And I guess my report here is that this is the last meeting of the year. Come on in. There's an agenda there if you'd like it. Yeah. Um, the first are moving to item 5.1, um, a consent item. It's, it's, it's an unusual thing that we have here at the zoning administrator meeting. It's a zoning code interpretation. And the purpose for this zoning and code interpretation, zoning code interpretation is uh, to clarify zoning code section 2036.070A1. This is um, a section of the code that talks about offsite parking and the permitting requirements for offsite parking. 
Um, uh, it, the code, we're clarifying what level of conditional use permit it would require, and it's, it is a minor conditional use permit. If you have any questions about that zoning interpretation that's posted online, <clears throat> you can contact planning at srcity.org if you want to see that, um, uh, if you can't find it on the agenda. And um, there is an a 10 day appeal period on this as well. So this is an unusual action. It can be appealed twice, the first to the planning commission. So I don't, I, I find it unlikely that anybody's gonna take any issue with this, but if you do, um, the appeal period uh, will expire on January 4th. Okay. Second. January 2nd, right? I'm sorry, January 2nd, 2024. Thank you, Mark. No matter what I say for the rest of the meeting, it's January 2nd. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to scheduled items. The first one is um, it's for a, a conditional use permit for a new above ground, I'm sorry, design review for a new above ground storage tank and canopy for the property located at 3965 Occidental Road, city file number uh, DR23032. The project planner is Monet Shikali. Is Shikali? Thank you. Morning, Administrator. Trying to expand this one. It doesn't show the it presentation. Well. One next to say to please. Oh, come on. Right there. Where? Uh, oh, there right we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Up on there. That we go. Okay. Thank you. So as you mentioned, this is a minor design review. So this is a minor design review to install a new above ground. Let me lower down this thing. Okay, perfect. Above ground for fuel storage tank, new fuel dispensing piping equipment, <clears throat> dispenser units, and a new steel frame canopy over the proposed structures. So here is where the site is located. This site has been used for PGNE for many years before even those residential development were in place. And here is a parcel zone PD and the general plan land uses low density residential. This is the area of where the canopy is being proposed is almost at the middle, middle of the lot next to an existing structure. So the, let me get next here. This is where the canopy will be placed. So already they have dispensers there and there's under the grant tank that will be removed. And there are some other structures there that will stay in place, such as this wash and awning structure. They will keep it and they will not remove it. So here is the canopy that is going to be proposed about the new dispensers. It will match the existing building colors. And I don't know if the applicant team is here so they can provide detail for the color and use or like a materials for this canopy. And here I'm trying to show you the existing structures. As you can see, they have dispensers and other structures in that area that will be removed and replaced with the new ones. And they will have a new canopy to cover them. And the project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for two categorical exemption, 15301 for minor alteration to existing facilities and 15303 for new small structures. Staff received one call from a neighbor that had questions about location of this canopy and the height of the canopy. And after I explained where the location will be, there were no questions or comments. And with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the zoning administrator by resolution approve the minor design review permit for the property located at 3965 Occidental Road. And that was my presentation. And is the applicant here? No. What's their name in case they're on Zoom? I can ask them. We do have a hand raised in case it do you is have the Joe Ramagher. What's the name of the person? That's... Joe Ramagher. John Ramagher. I have to look up my email address. <laughs> no, go ahead and, and, and let them speak and ask if they're um, part of the applicant team. John, you may unmute yourself. Are you part of the applicant team? Yes. My name is John Romagher. I'm civil engineer with Tate and Associates and part of the applicant team. 
Can you clear? Hi, John. Thank you. Can you clarify the colors? Yes. Or do you have anything to add, I should say? <laughs> On the elevation, it does notate the materials as an aluminum composite material. Uh, you know, it's pre-finished and the color is to match the existing building, which is a tan color. Do you have anything to add to Monet's presentation other than that? I do not have anything further to add, uh, but I am here to answer any questions or um, if anyone has any concerns. Thank you. Um, so now I'll open the public comment period. If there's anybody here who has anything to add to that, more questions? And I'll close the public comment period. Um, I did a site visit. I can see that there is a pretty tall wall on that western boundary of the site. Um, so I don't think any of the neighbors are going to be able to see anything. Um, I also uh, I don't think anybody from the street from Occidental will be able to see anything either. It's uh, kind of shield. It's tucked back behind an existing building. Um, given the proximity to residential uses, though, I am going to modify one of the conditions of approval. John, I'll, I want to make sure that you agree with this. Uh, condition number two that limits the construction hours. I'm going to limit them a little bit more from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday with no construction on Sundays or holidays. Is that OK with you? Um, one second, I'm trying to, you said 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday? Yes, and then 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday. Basically, I'm pulling it at an hour each night because of the residential uses right over the wall. That is acceptable. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And with that minor change, I am going to approve the conditional use permit. So thank you for being available. So moving thank you. on. Thank you very much. Whoops. Thank you very much. You're Thanks. welcome. <laughs> Um, moving on to item 6.2, this is a proposed uh, portable MRI trailer and pad design review at 2285 Challenger Way, city file number DR23034. And again, Ms. Shikali is the planner. So as you mentioned, this is another minor design review project. The applicant is proposing a new portable MRI trailer on a concrete pad in a parking lot for the new VA clinic hospital. So the site is pretty new and constructed recently. Here is the project site and the star shows location of the proposed trailer. And the project site is on business park, which is consistent with the general plan land use, which is also business park. And here is the location on the side, that's the landscaping area also. Here is a closer look on the concrete pad and the MRI. This is supposed to be a temporary use permit, but because it's going to be more than one year, so the applicant has decided to, instead of submitting a temporary use permit for one year, to keep it for longer than one year, but they are not sure how long it will stay there and when they will remove it. And this is the existing parking lot with some new trees. And uh, the project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and it also qualifies to two exemptions. 15301, minor alteration to an existing facility and 15303, new small structures. I did not receive any calls or questions from neighbors regarding the proposed MRI. However, the applicant has emailed me and has some questions regarding the condition number eight that says consider softening the trailer's presence with landscaping, shrubs, or decorative fences to in integrate into the environment. I believe the applicant is also available want to discuss that condition mm -hmm. with you and if they can, it's possible to remove this condition. And with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the zoning administrator by resolution approve the minor design review permit for the property located at 2285 Challenger Ray. That was my presentation. The applicant team is Tim Burry, I think. He might be available. Yes. Okay. And can I, I'm happy to hear from the applicant. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. How are you today? Doing very well. Thank you. And I appreciate the accommodations and being able to uh, 
attend via Zoom today. Um, <clears throat> so we are requesting that condition eight be removed. It was noted as a consider item. And um, in the email sending to Monet, we cited the fact that one, we are not adjacent to any residential um, adjacent properties. Most of the other properties are similar or conducive in, in use. Um, it is mobile and not a permanent fixture. And when we, while we can't explicitly state it will be gone in a certain period. Uh, the VA, when we originally did this building two years ago, did not have um, the staff to that would uh, utilize an MRI trailer, and that that can change again at, at any time. Um, so, as far as the duration of when it would be there, uh, it is unknown. Um, the landscaped area already exists. There are some shrubs. There's about a 40 to 41 foot buffer between there and the road. The adjacent property across Capricorn, Capricorn Way has mature trees, additional parking, additional, I'll say boulevard area or landscaped area. So there is shielding from that um, tenant already with their own trees, mature trees. And, and it is it is a medical grade clinical space. So it's not a trailer that's used for storage. There's not going to be things being packed around it, you know, stored there. We have made the provisions for and considerations for patient uh, caregiver safety, ADA access, et cetera. So it really is just the trailer that will be sitting there, uh, which is again, a medical grade, clean in nature, et cetera. So we would ask if we could have this excluded, this requirement, and I would pretty appreciate that consideration. Thanks. Thank you. Um, is there anybody here from the public that would like to comment on this item? Okay. Um, I um, thank you, by the way, for your comments. I, I visited the site. I've actually visited the site a couple of times. And um, I, I, so I want to say, first of all, the VA building is a very attractive building. This is a relatively new um, business park, and it's kind of filled with pretty attractive buildings. Oh, and I think I need to close the public comment period. That, that <laughs> you now see my fault. I'm good at opening them. That I'm horrible about closing them. Um, so moving on, yeah, the... Uh, it's a, it's a very attractive business park. I do see the screening on the street. Um, I, I took, some, went, took some photos, so I kind of think about this. I did see your comments and your email. Thank you. Um, I do want it screened, but I don't think it needs to be a permanent screening. You know, there are planters or something that you can come in to put on the end caps of those, of the unit, um, you know, putting in some uh, little shrubs in a, a whatever, a, a, a planter box that can be removed when the trailer is removed. You know, if it were a temporary, if we knew it was going to be removed in 12 months with a temporary use permit, you wouldn't be going through this process, that staff level for a reason. But if it could stay there for, you know, multiple years, we want it to remain attractive. So I think just screening it, it you don't need to install a fence. Um, what I did notice is that there is a failing tree in the landscape. Um, that failing tree should be addressed, whether it's removed, to let the tree next to it kind of grow into the area um, or uh, replaced, either one. So I would encourage you to do that. But as far as the end cap, so we're not just screening it from the buildings across the street. We're screening it from anybody driving through that business park, so for people on the road. And again, it doesn't need to be anything too elaborate. I mean, I, you, they have those very nice stainless steel uh, troughs that a lot of people use. You could put um, any number of plants that would grow up to be about maybe six feet tall and just be a real nice screen. Again, on the end caps, um, I, it doesn't need to be screened on the side of the VA hospital or clinic, and it also does not need to be screened anymore along the street. It's just those, those end caps. So can can we reconstruct that condition to reflect that? Right. Is he muted? Yeah. Yes. 
Can you unmute? Yeah, I was jabbering. There <laughs> you go. I do it all the time. <laughs> um, yes, we can modify that condition to say um, planters screening with some shrubbery or or whatever. Um, you know, and if it's containerized, I'm just going to tell you, you know, my neighbors did this beautiful screening in those types of containers with bamboo. You don't want to put bamboo in the ground because it can just reap havoc on your pipes. But in a planter like that, it would grow quickly, provide a beautiful screening for you okay. and inexpensively. Is, is, can we maximize the number of planters or if they're individual planters to two or three, what are we looking at? You know, I, I just want to screen the end cap. So if your okay. planter is is two by two, you're probably going to need about six of them. If it's six by two, you'll probably need two of them. So you can work with with uh, Ms. Shikali to figure out a, a planting plan. She um, will just go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll say um, change that to read um, provide screening on both ends of the trailer. The design should be approved by planning staff. Okay. Does that work for you? That, I, that does. I, and just note that on the patient side where the parking is in ADA, we need to make sure that there's that they would not interfere. So there may be slightly less screening on that side than the opposite end to keep those clearances and safety for uh, ADA. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, work with Monet. She can... Um, yeah, if there's any question, I'm usually in the office and easy, easily accessible as well. And by the way, I want to say I'm really happy you guys found the staff to get the MRI trailer there for the, the VA. It's important. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you. I appreciate you oh, all. Oh, wait, here. wait. Before you go away, I also want to make a correction to the resolution. Thanks, Monet. Um, in, the, in the very top, the very beginning of the res or the first whereas as we call them in the resolution it refers there's a typo it refers to the va clink and i'm going to revise that to say the va outpatient clinic santa rosa okay yeah i saw that actually so thank you and i and i agree with that correction and then there's and one of one of the findings and this is more for the record one of the findings finding number four I'm gonna change it to read, and you don't have to take a lot of notes because I've, I've got this. The architectural design of the proposed MRI trailer is compatible with the character of the surrounding neighborhood in that the proposed MRI trailer is fabrica a fabricated structure, temporary in nature, that will be placed on a concrete pad. The trailer is proposed in a location where existing landscaping will screen it from neighboring commercial properties, period. So, um, yeah, that we'll go ahead and make those those minor edits to the resolution. Thank you. We uh, we agree with those changes and and the modified condition. Have a good Perfect. day and happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. And with that, I'll go ahead and approve the resolution. Thank you. Okay, change of the guard here. The next item is a public meeting. Um, this is the one that we talked about a little bit earlier, an outdoor storage and commissary kitchen um, open during transitional hours. This is a conditional use permit proposed at 100 Sebastopol Road, CUP 23-036. I already announced that it was going to be continued, but I will you clarify if it's a date certain or a at this point in time, it's a date uncertain, and there will be um, another notice that will be sent out um, confirming the, the next available date or, yeah, when it's when it's determined. Got it. We so. did um, during the open, um, you know, the public comment session while yeah. walking over. I don't know if you heard those or not, but I heard a good chunk of it. Okay, good, good. I took and some I, notes. I have received written comments, I believe, both. I believe so. Okay. I, know, I know Cliff for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. So with that, we're going to move on to item 6.2 or 6.4. Um, and this is a, a public meeting item. It's uh, Medic Ambulance Service Incorporated. Uh, this is a conditional use permit proposed at 1269A Corporate Center Parkway. Um, the 
project planner is Kristen A. Tumians. And give us just a sec to get this. I can't say anything. This is what I was going to say. I'm so glad I don't have to work the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I also want to say again for any actions taken today so far, the appeal period, we can all say it like together, expires on January 2nd, 2024. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ms. Murray. My name is Chris A. Tumians. I'm a senior planner and I'm presenting Medic Ambulance Service Inc. CUP 23 057 proposed at 1269 Acres <laughs> or Parkway. In June of this year, Medic, in partnership with Sonoma County Fire District, were awarded the Advanced Life Support 911 Ambulance Provider in Sonoma County. This service is set to commence on January 16th, at which time they will take over as the primary responder for the exclusive operating area in Sonoma County. The facility would be the main operation of a Medic Ambulance Sonoma County Division. This operation will be 24-7. The ambulances that are parked at this facility will be minimal as they will be deployed throughout the county. Any ambulances that are not in use will be parked within the warehouse and will not be visible from the street. This number would be less than 10 at any given time. Uh, the employees would utilize the parking spots that are associated with this facility for parking their personal vehicles while on duty in the ambulances. This facility will not be a dispatch center and ambulances will not be deployed from this facility with their sirens. Sirens will be checked on the ambulances by the crews prior to taking the ambulance out for the shift. This is necessary to ensure that the lights and sirens are working properly. This test is a very quick turn on and turn off of the siren to ensure it's working properly. The applicant states that there will be approximately 50 people working at any given time and no more than 20 people working at this location at any, any one time. Most employees will be posted at locations throughout Sonoma County uh, equipment and supply deliveries, uh, the frequency would be bi-weekly. And the delivery hours for goods coming in typically would be between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on weekdays to minimize traffic and noise disruptions. This is the um, subject property. It's located in a business park and it's a uh, tenant space within this building located at Circadian Way and Corporate <laughs> Parkway. Here's a little bit more of a neighborhood context. Um, there, there isn't a whole lot of residential around it. Um, that airstrip is slated to be residential one day, um, but it's separated by a road and buildings. Um, here is a general plan and zoning map. The purple indicates business park. And you can see it's quite a distance away from any uh, existing residential and future residential. Here is a site, uh, site plan showing the tenant space within the building. And here's a floor plan showing how they would use the <coughs> Pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15301 and 15303, this project is categorically exempt from CEQA because the use is proposed within an existing facility with the installation of small new equipment and conversion of a small structure from one use to another involving negligible expansion of the existing use. Additionally, the site is zoned for such use and does not involve significant amounts of hazardous substances. All necessary public services and facilities are available and the surrounding area is not environmentally sensitive. Um, <clears throat> there were no public comments um, for this project, <coughs> uh, not a lot of interest when um, notice of application went out um, and when the notice for this meeting went out, there are no unresolved issues. So planning staff recommends uh, by resolution that the zoning administrator approve a minor use permit for a public safety facility. And the extended hours of operation would apply to um, businesses that are open to the public and this would not be open to the public and um, industrial uses are permitted to operate 24 seven, as long as they're not open to the public. Uh, and there would be set hours for a public <laughs> operation. So as far as extended hours, um, yes, this facility would op operate 24 seven, but would not require extended hours of operation. 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. That was one of my questions. Yes. Um, and is the applicant here? Yes. Hi. Hi. They are. <laughs> Good. Do you have anything to add to Chris Kinney's? I, mean, I just want to say, I'm Jimmy Pearson, the president. Our family owns a better gamble, and so we're obviously really excited to be working with the district and starting service here. And there's a lot of moving parts when you're onboarding, you know, 30 plus ambulances and trying to find space that works. And so I just want to thank you guys for working with us because it's new to us and working with planning staff to make sure we check boxes, but also have some nimbleness to be ready to go in less than 26 days. So, um, uh, but yeah, thank you. And I'm here to answer, we're here to answer any questions that you guys have. I have a staffing question. Yes, it said uh, 50 people and then 20 people. Is it 50 people so, employed so, overall and you no know, more than 20 at one time? Yeah, no, we don't expect <laughs> 20 in the building at one time. We okay. have obviously leadership staff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our ops manager, supervisory staff, some education and training, mm -hmm. but the crews come in, they park their vehicles. So that's that global of 50 where you might see cars parked for 50 people, but they're taking the ambulance and then going out <laughs> the community, right, to a posting location that we have. Like, so we have a station uh, Tuscany, we're posting at some fire stations, mm -hmm. uh, facility Oklahoma, you know, all the different. So they'll come in, grab their stuff, and then disperse. So at that facility, <laughs> said more than more than 20 people. And that would be a lot, even in the building. Yeah, I I want to say, I personally, I think this is a great spot for that location, or that location is a great spot for this business. Um, I did notice when I did my site visit that there were several cars parked in the parking lot. I don't take issue with that. I think it's absolutely fine to have all the service vehicles out right. there. Um, th those, will those won't be pulled in at night. So the reality right now is we're prepping for 31 vehicles to be available for our system mm -hmm. with a peak deployment at 20, mm -hmm. right? And kind of low staffing of 10 or 11. Um, so right now, but we're not running the service. So you're seeing rigs that are kind of getting ready to go Okay. So right now is kind of a bad time to judge because uh, there's there's things everywhere and we're just <clears throat> busting up the scenes and you know to get ready and also be compliant with this process. But yeah. we don't expect ambulances to be parked outside, um, and even with using the other stations, other fire stations like we have Station Five in Rincon Valley mm -hmm. um, that we'll be parking ambulances at, and other we won't see such a big use there. So that that's kind. of I will say that I don't take issue with you parking some trucks outside. It's okay. not, it's in a business park. It's overnight. The fire department's on that street. So, yeah, they're right next to the yeah, street. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, no issue with it. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, the, for the record, it looks like there will be some outside. Be some outside no problem with it. Um, and then I think, let's see if I got that one. Um, I want to throw one, one edit into uh the sixth finding that has to do with the California Environmental or Environmental Quality Act, and that is just at in the and the immediate surrounding, just because there's some vacant land off. So okay. I don't think it's in any issue, but just yeah. just if, if somebody wants to split hairs, mm -hmm. and that's the only thing. Thank you for the clarification, all of you, and um, I will be approving okay. that project. Public comment. Oh. Public comment. I'd like to open. I take that back. I'm not approving it yet. Um, is there anybody in the room that would like to comment on that item? Okay. I'm going to close public comment period and <laughs> approve the project. So thank you, thank you. very much. Thank you, thank you. you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. So moving on to item 6.5, the public meeting. Uh, for the addition of a garage that has an ADU on the top of it. Um, it requires, the garage requires a landmark alteration and the property is located at 628 Wheeler Street, city file num number LMA 23-007. And once again, Planner Tumians. Thank you. Planner. Thank you, Ms. Murray. This is, as you stated, a garage with an ADU at um, file number LMA 23-007. At 628 Wheeler Street. Now, this is an aerial view of the property at 628 Wheeler Street. There's an existing detached garage in the back that you can kind of see from this street view. Um, 
And here's a neighborhood context showing that the property um, is in a PD and it's also in a um, historic neighborhood. There's a little bit more of a neighborhood context showing the entire block, um, which is mostly residential. Um, here's a general plan and zoning showing there is some core mixed use. Uh, the downtown is kind of creeping into this block, um, but the um, surrounding neighbors are all within that historic PD. Uh, it's uh, known as the Burbank Gardens Neighborhood Preservation District. And these, um, this preservation district is um, known for having typical lots that are narrow, measuring 40 to 50 feet. Houses generally follow a similar front setback on any given block face and front stoops or small porches. Um, uh, create clearly defined entries. Um, usually there are single car garages located at the rear, prop rear of the property, often on a um, side property line with a narrow driveway access, which is very fitting. Um, and and uh, this property is typical of that. Again, this uh, 628 wheeler is a contributor the um, primary structure of the residence is a Tudor Revival built in 1931, which is an estimate, could be older. And here you can see a north elevation of the existing residence and then the garage in the back that they're proposing to demolish. It's a one story. I, it looks like a two, store, a two car garage, but it, it is fairly small. Um, it's in, it's seen better days and you can see, <laughs> You can see the front facade of the garage has um, uh, horizontal siding and the um, portions of the garage that the other portion, other sides of the garage are a board batten. Here's a, a close up of the board and batten and the rotting timbers. Um, the applicant is proposing a new detached garage um, three feet from the property line. Um, it would have an ADU above and the um, building would be clad similarly to the existing garage with horizontal siding in the front and board and batten on the sides. You can see they have some divided uh, light windows um, in the garage. Um, the right side of the garage would be the most visible from the street and um, they've chosen a fairly attractive garage door um, that would be visible. Here's the floor plan for the garage below <clears throat> and the ADU above. It's a one bedroom ADU. And <clears throat> I've already talked about this a little bit um, already, but um, uh, this, this property is very typical in that they're, um, they have a garage in the back that's accessed from this uh, narrow driveway from on the side. Um, the materials are reminiscent of other homes in the area with horizontal siding and board and batten. Um, the proposed project uh, was reviewed in compliance with CEQA and uh, qualifies for a class three exemption under section 15303. New construction or conversion of small structures in that the proposal involves a new detached garage and accessory dwelling unit. Uh, we had one comment, uh, late comment from uh, someone from the public um, urging us to approve an attractive design. Um, I don't think they they saw the plans, but they were concerned that it would be fairly prominently prominently visible from the street, and they were hoping that we approve an attractive design today. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, uh, the Planning and Economic Development Department uh, recommends that the zoning administrator, by resolution, approve a minor landmark alteration permit to allow the demolition an existing detached garage and the construction of a new detached garage and accessory dwelling unit above at 628 Wheeler Street. And here is my contact information. You need to contact me after right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know that there are members in the room on the applicant team for this one because I walked in with some of them. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Would you like to add anything to Kristen A's presentation or... I hope you enjoyed my chickens. <laughs> no, I just, you know, the, the existing structure has been um, from the time I moved in, I've lived in that house over 20 years. That existing structure has been kind of, I'm surprised it's still standing this time. So the fact that it will be a 
structurally sound dwelling is wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. And I'm hugely supportive personally of ADUs. So um, I'd like to open up for public comment, if I could, if there's anybody in the room that would like to comment on this project. And with that, I'd like to close public comment. <laughs> so woohoo. Um, I, I want to say first, I think it's 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 a lovely design. I do have a question though. I have a question about the board and batten and then the, la the horizontal siding in the front. Is there a reason that you, was it trying to clone what's there now? Yes. I'll let, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, I was trying to clone it. I was trying to make the front of it look like the house and the back of it, which is less expensive board and batten. And that would be the three sides, which is pretty much covered by fences and trees. And, and I think there's also a financial a cost, the, the, the cost of trying to use the redwood siding on all four sides would be prohibitive. And also I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to make it a, a ADU that would be comfortable mm -hmm. to live in. So I'm trying to also look at my budget that I have as a single mom. <laughs> no, I, I, I understand. I'm just, I want to kind of do a little bit of brainstorming. I'm also the, the um, staff liaison to the Cultural Heritage Board. So I've learned a lot from the board. And I first, I don't think, I don't know that the existing garage that you're tearing down would qualify as a historic structure. It certainly, it doesn't look historic to me. Um, I, so, and so the reconstruction, um, I don't know that you need to use redwood. I think that you could probably use hardy board for the reconstruction of the new building, which is something you may want to consider. Um, I, I, I would not be the one to approve T111 ever, but I would encourage you to look at that hardy board. Um, and I, with that, I would also encourage you to look at it as it wraps around the building rather than using the board and batten. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm, so I'm just going to add a condition that says to consider um, alternative materials that would allow the same horizontal siding to wrap around the building. Um, you, by the way, the home is lovely. I did do a site visit. I am not concerned about what people are going to see off site, just what, you know, how we reconstruct our districts. So, yeah, so, yeah you've done a beautiful oh, a job keeping up on it. Let me hear. Thank you. <laughs> it's nice to see. <laughs> I have a crew here of people who know what they're doing. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay, so, so um, yeah, let me just look at my notes real quick. There, there's two changes that I would like to make and finding number seven, I just want to add on to the end of it. And this is the one I'll just go ahead and read it. The proposed exterior changes are consistent with the applicable sec secretary of the interior standards for the treatment of historic properties with guidelines for preserving, rehabilitating, restoring and reconstructing historic buildings, 2017 revision in that the proposed garage and accessory dwelling will not be readily visible from the public right away and won't have an impact on neighboring properties or the historic district as a whole. Uh, exterior materials have been selected to be consistent but not match the exterior materials on the primary dwelling and the neighborhood. And there is no change in the proposed use. That's just kind of building on the Secretary of the Interior's stuff and it's because again my my involvement with the chb um i'd never want them to question me on that <laughs> so and then the other thing is a consideration to your neighbors i'm going to reduce your construction hours um to 8 a.m to 6 p.m monday through uh friday and 9 a.m to 5 p.m on saturday with no construction on sundays or holidays i'm sorry what was the saturday saturday is nine to five okay and if you agree to that, those that modified condition, and your neighbors, your neighbors will appreciate it. I, I know I appreciate it with my neighbors. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and approve the project. And yay! I know I'm very excited to see those permits coming through. And I'm going to say that there is an appeal period. <laughs> <laughs> Mark over your phone. January. Yep. <laughs> January 2nd, 2024. Got it. January 2nd, 2024. If anybody has any issue with this, that's that's you got to get an appeal submitted by then. And congratulations.
Thank you. Merry it's Christmas. been a lot of years in the process. This has been in my head since I pretty much bought the house in 2000. So. I get it. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to um, item 6.6. I'm speaking slowly so you can get up. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. oh, Mo moving on to item 6.6, .6, which is another public meeting, you bet. Um, and it's proposing a live work a use at an existing building, a conditional requiring a conditional use permit. Location is at 405 Chin Street, city file number CUP 23040. Um, and Connor McKay is the project planner. And go for it. Thank you, Zoning Administrator. Uh, Murray. Murray. <laughs> <laughs> um, messed that one up last time. Um, let me share my screen here. And I'm a little bit less of a formal presenter, so I hope that's okay with everybody. Um, so yeah, as you mentioned, this is a proposal for a live work um, land use at 405 Chin Street. Um, the zoning district is commercial office, um, which precludes the applicant's ability to move in to the dwelling and use it as a single family dwelling land use um, with a home occupation. So it was um, staff's direction to go with the live work land use because that is an allowable use in the commercial office district with the approval of a minor conditional use permit. And that is why we are here today. Um, the proposed land use is a um, professional office. Um, I believe it's something in the nature of a plumbing business that would be entirely conducted offsite um, besides administrative and office work um, on the interior of the building. Um, in terms of interior changes, there would be um, basically combining multiple office suites to comprise of the single family dwelling use and then maintaining an office suite near the front of the property um, for the administrative um, portion of the business. And then here is um, the front of the building and then the rear of the building um, is here. So all uh, parking areas are sufficient and are compliant with our parking standards established by the zoning code. Um, we cannot require any additional parking. However, I don't think that any would be um, needed if we were to implement the required parking for professional office land use due to the square footage of the proposed office use. Um, there would be no members of the public or customers of the business attending, uh, accessing the site. Um, all, like I said, all the work for the business would be performed offsite. Um, and then in terms of environmental review, the project has been found in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act in that the project is exempt because the proposed uses are consistent with the city's general plan and also there is a, um, the project consists of a change of land use with negligible or no expansion. And in this case, I would argue that there's actually less intense of an impact because there were a few office suites and now there are um, just one with a single family dwelling. Um, The project would be required to comply with the city's noise ordinance, so there wouldn't be any disturbance related to um, noise to the surrounding area. Um, and with that, the applicant, I believe, is in attendance. And yes. if you have any questions about the business operation um, or anything of that nature, they're, they're happy to respond. And I'm not sure if you have any comments you'd like to make to, supp to supplement my presentation or... Um. Yeah, I'm Brendan Fierig, and uh, we uh, just have a kid going to school, and we wanted to live here, and uh, especially we're going to JC, I think, from here and stuff. So uh, we uh, we saw this and uh, asked if we could do it, and we think we can. And um, the business would never. No trucks. We, we're not a service business, plumbing business anyway. We do mostly uh, radiant heating, condensing boilers, 
plumbing, uh, heat pumps now, um, that kind of stuff. Solar collectors, not much these days, mostly electrical. But um, uh, that was our plan, and we're, we're looking at Sonoma State, and we're looking at JC from here. So uh, we have a few years to be in Sonoma. Right now, we're driving from San Francisco and with, uh, with uh, bus and stuff. So I think, unless you want to say something, Bob, Bob is helping me with drawings. Um, yeah, um, just looking at the project kind of from a global standpoint um, with post-pandemic work practices, teleworking, um, virtual office visits, the demand for this type of office space is kind of dwindling while our demand for housing is ever climbing through the housing crisis. So I think opportunities like this to convert underutilized office space into residential live work type facility is a no brainer, especially across the street from a, a middle school. Um, it just seems like a good fit. The current uh, demographic of the neighborhood is, is kind of a menagerie of multifamily, single family and offices. So there's already that type of use established in the neighborhood. Um, so just kind of other than the zoning district, it just seems to be a, a kind of a, a good fit. Is there anybody else in the room that would like to comment on this project? So is this kind of like the future for some of the office space downtown Santa Rosa? I own the building right next door, and I'm just curious: Are we going to is uh, Santa Rosa going to allow to convert as the office space becomes less popular because people are choosing to work from home? Is that something that the city of Santa Rosa is considering? Is to start allowing some of that district to convert back to residential? You know, I think is this in a PD district, or is no? It's in a commercial office. Commercial office. Off the top of my head, I don't know that I, I don't know what the requirements are, but I think you can do residential in in the commercial office. But you can contact uh, if you after the meeting, uh -huh. I'm happy to look stuff up for you. One of us could. Gotcha. So but um, as, as it relates to this, so we've actually seen let me respond to that. We've seen a lot of commercial offices being converted into multifamily housing throughout the city. Um, it's in different zoning districts, so I don't know those those requirements, but it usually, I, I know in two cases that it triggered a minor design review for some changes outside. So that happens. So we can help you with that. That's not really relevant to this project. So I'm happy to talk to you after the meeting. I want to say, first of all, I, I look that it's such a nice looking house. I think uh, I remember when this project initially came in. I um, I think it'll be lovely as a home with an office or a live work uh, facility. So I and I you pretty much answered my question. I have one question about how many trucks will you be will you have? Is it just a is it just um, no trucks? Uh, my my own truck. Got it. And my wife's Got it. car. I think that's about all. Got it. Well, I, I soon. I if you, you there, you go. And I went to the JC and SSU, by the way. So uh, FYI, <laughs> I like that path. Anyways, um, I uh, I've opened up. I didn't close the public comment period, so now I'm going to close the public comment period. And sir, may I have your name for the record? I'm oh, sorry. May I have your name for the record? Art. 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 And last name? Alexander. Thank you. And um, I. I, I don't have, I ask, I have no changes to this resolution. Yay. Um, so you're, I'm going to approve the project. I know it's been a long haul. Um, you're there. You've got a 10 day appeal period. So this, this action, like every other action today is appealable um, up until January 4th, 2020, uh, January 2nd, 2024. And um, yeah, I, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of pushback. So congratulations. Um, during that appeal period, you can start working on building permits if you want. Um, yeah. I think it would be a low risk. So, Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you all for all your help. You bet. Yeah. You Thank bet. you. Very helpful. Okay, moving on. If you want, you're, you're well, free to go. Well, <laughs> and, yeah. and if you want to leave your contact, um, I can hit you up with the... Uh, yeah, if you want to give me your email, please do that. Or, yeah, I'll give you mine. Thank you. All right, it's 
art, my scribble, sorry, art.alexander number two. Sweet. Gmail. Thanks, Art. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye. Oops, Art. Art, you, oh, no, you don't want this, do you? Okay, I'll leave. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, I know. Love those. Take care. Thanks, Connor. Thank you. Thanks very much. We're neighbors, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to item 6.7, our last and final item. This is a public meeting for a mobile food vending um, business. Uh, it requires a conditional use permit, and it will be located at uh, 3011 Santa Rosa Avenue. Uh, the city file number is CUP 23-046, and again, um, Connor McKay is the planner, and <clears throat> thank you. Um, yeah, so here is an overview aerial of three zero one one Santa Rosa. Across the street, you have a motel. Um, the truck would be, as is shown on the site plan, um, approximately in this location, mm -hmm. and then. Um, the existing businesses it looks like there's a cycle gear and there's also um, a cannabis retail dispensary um, and i think there's some we're gonna have to add a condition about um, restrooms because the project is required to maintain an agreement for the use of restrooms within 200 feet of the proposed mobile food vending facility um, and we want to make sure that there's no conflicts with the cannabis dispensaries um, use um, the project also includes on-site dining, um, I believe two tables with four chairs each, um, and there are specific requirements and the conditions related to those um, tables as well. And if there's a gazebo, that would be required to be um, cleared by fire. Um, let's see. And then I also need to read in a correction to the resolution related to the general plan land use designation consistency finding. Um, so this project is consistent with the general plan land use designation of retail business services in that the proposed mobile food vending operation would provide food via a mobile food vending facility in an area that is envisioned by the general plan to provide a wide variety of retail and service establishments, including restaurants. Um, so generally, this is a pretty good spot for a food vending facility. There's not a whole lot of stuff around here that can um, provide that. We have a little bit of, we have a taqueria down the street, um, some storage and carpet store and a roofing business. So it's reasonable to anticipate that employees of the motel and of the roofing business and above and of the um, cannabis dispensary and patrons of those businesses as well would be appreciative of a mobile food vending um, facility in this location. Um, And then related to environmental review, the project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for a class four exemption uh, for pursuant to section 15304 minor alterations to land and that the mobile food vending facility is a minor temporary use of land having neg negligible or no permanent effects on the environment. And with that, the applicant is in attendance and is happy to answer any questions and clarifications. And I do have a draft of the um, condition related to the restroom use at Doobie Nights. If you want me to take a crack at it and we can workshop it or if you already have one in mind. Yeah, no, I, I don't and I'd love you to take a crack at it, but let's let's hear from the applicant first. Uh, how are you? I'm good. Good. Um, do you have anything to add to Connor's? Mm, not really. I mean, everything seems pretty much Set forward, you know, so um, I won't be really doing too too much to the land other than just posting my food truck and the tables, you know. Um, the bathroom, yeah, it's a concern because it's inside a cannabis store, but they're willing to block off any surrounding little doors or things to not, you know, so it could be separated from, from the cannabis store. So, so it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I did a site visit, just full disclosure. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a geek about that. My, my coworker here would confirm that. Um, I, I did a site visit, and I do have some questions about the bathroom, and, and we will condition it um, to make sure that, uh, yeah. That my first question is, it is only for employees. None of your customers will be using that. 
When I went in, they said that they told me at Doobie Nights that the, the, the place next door lets people use their bathroom periodically. Um, that's where they sent me. <laughs> so, so um, and but they did actually then take me around the back. And one of my concerns with with them when I when they opened up the door, they said first they suggested they were going to leave the back door unlocked, which is something I'm not comfortable with. And so I think we may need to work with the the uh, property or, or the business owner operator for Doobie Nights to make sure that a that back door stays locked and that when if you need to use the restroom that you have like a, a limited access key yeah and it's an electronic lock so i'm pretty sure they can do that and then the other thing is that on the inside when you go in that door to the bathroom the bathroom's right in front of you but there are two other doors and when i went in both those other doors were open and led to the cannabis dispensary, which they can't do. They have to keep those locked. So um, we're you're going to need to work with them on that, and we'll go ahead and, and craft some language into that condition of approval that says that that back door will remain locked, and that only employees of the truck, not not patrons of the truck, not customers, um, will be able to to access that door to use the bathroom, and. Um, and that the two interior doors leading from that hallway to the dispensary shall remain closed at all times while the truck is is in operation. So um, yesterday, you know, they they were doing some work in that hallway, and they said it was really cold. So that's why they had the door open to let some heat in there. But I'll suggest that next time maybe they get a little portable heater. <laughs> yes. Anyways, does does that work for you? Yes, of course. I'm a, I I love mobile food trucks. Love them. So this one's on my way home. I'm looking forward to um, seeing there. The other thing that um, I, I want to compliment um, Planner McKay for is that he did not limit your hours of operation. So you, you do, you know, the zoning code allows you to serve, I think, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., so if you do want to extend your hours, you'll need to come in and get a zoning clearance, but you won't have to update your conditional use permit. I'm happy to report. So anyways, um, and then what you got? What you got? <clears throat> so I'll read into the record. Just this is the first draft, draft. subject to your review. Um, <clears throat> condition number 13. Jeez. <clears throat> The agreement for use of restrooms for employees within 200 feet of the mobile food vending facility shall not conflict with any state law, security plan, or conditions of approval that regulate the operation of Doobie Nights, a cannabis retail dispensary located at 3011 Santa Rosa Avenue. Doors to the restroom and cannabis retail dispensary shall remain locked at all times, and only employees of the mobile food vending operation shall have access to a key. For the restrooms. For the restrooms. Interior doors shall remain locked as well and it, you can make that fit however you want to make it fit um, doors to the restroom and cannabis retail dispensary shall remain locked at all times and only employees of the mobile food vending operation shall have access to a key for the restrooms perfect and since the only people in the room are with the applicant i'm going to assume there's there's not any public comment but if anybody would like to add anything, now is your time. Just one, quick, one question. The operation hours for mobile food units in the whole city, it's from uh, until 11 p.m. for everybody? Unless they've been conditioned otherwise. So it requires a conditional use permit, and we have to make a compatibility finding. And in this area, it's, it's surrounded by all commercial uses, but a lot of times those mobile food vending trucks are nearby residential uses. And so, you know, it's not, it's not the business operator, but it might be, it might be, you know, a customer that comes up with their radio blaring or mm -hmm. you know, slam the door. Or they, you know, have a conversation that's real disturbing for to nearby residential uses. So we will reduce as part of the use permit process. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing to keep tabs on is that, you know, at this point in time, the zoning code requires you to, if another operator wants to come in, the zoning code says that they have to get their own use permit, a new use permit. Unlike most use permits that stay with the land, 
We are in the process of updating that regulation. And so next year, that's another condition we did not add, right? That Connor did not add into the, the um, conditional use permit. So it wouldn't be an issue for you guys in the future if you wanted to sell your, you know, your space if you will, for lack of a better uh, description. But yeah, if you wanted to pass that along and let somebody else take over operating a truck at the location, you have to wait for us to update those regulations. It's a goofy thing that was in there from, you know, it was kind of carryover language when we extended the, the food trucks to, um, uh, or yeah, mobile vending, mobile food vending um, throughout the city. And, um, and we're all learning that they're they're a real gem in our community. I mean, I like I said, I'm a huge fan of the drugs. So, um, <clears throat> but if there are no other comments, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period. I, as with the new condition, I'm going to go ahead and approve the use permit. And you guys have a great day. Merry Christmas. And appeal period. Huh? Appeal period. Oh, and there's an appeal period. Oh, yeah. Now you've heard that like seven times. <laughs> um, the appeal period for every action taken today is January 2nd, 2024. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 11:42 on December 22nd. Happy holidays, everybody. Okay, happy holidays. Thank you.